one trade a day. All you need is one trade a day to make this kind of money in the market. You, you break it down. You chunk it out. It comes out to be if you're making $1,000 a day, it's like five grand a week. But there are times where the market's closed and there are holidays. So it, it's roughly $250,000 a year that you can make as an annual income in the market. And I'm roughing that out at 1000 bucks a day, but you will have days that the market is closed. This is a good limit. This is a trade I'm in right now. Actually, I didn't, I didn't snag it this from today. It's pulled back a little bit, but I'm playing it out for the earnings. I'm in Google. I'm in Google for the earnings that are coming out this week, Thursday night, they report. And here's a great example. I could have gotten out of this trade. I didn't. I'm still in it. But I could have made over $6,000 just in one trade. So I could have just done one trade for the whole week and, and, and made more than my goal, <laughs> okay, last week. So, you know, here is a great example of doing it and making the money and how you get to the point where you live in the now, you learn a system that works to make money in the market as a trader, and your future is what? Your future is you can make way more than $250,000 a year. Your future is whatever goal that you set for yourself that you want to make. The market it has unlimited potential to make money. It's all about how much you risk and the size you take. And this position is a good position. It's 50 contracts. And that's 5,000 shares, and that's, that's actually a big position in the stock, okay? So one of the things we're going to talk about today is my system on gas, but I just want to show you this is a chart of Google. I clipped this earlier today. Bottom line is you can use my system for day trading or doing options. Now, what's the benefit of options? You can day trade options, but if you can't babysit a day trade in, you know, in the morning, and be at your desk in the morning, you can take an options trade, put it in, and let it, you know, let it ride out, like I've been doing. Let it ride out for a couple of days or a week or two weeks. You don't have to be actively day trading in order to make money in the market. Some people say, well, this time, I, I'm not ready. I can't quit my job yet, or, or I don't have the time. You could still learn my method and trade options and make money doing this. And you could have done the Google trade. And you didn't have to day trade every day in the room. I have a trading room. So, you know, there's many, many ways to make money using my system in the market, even if you cannot actively day trade. You could do options trades and you just play them out. So what are your income goals? This is something that I've, you know, talked about before and we're going to talk about it again. Are you achieving them? You've got to sit down and almost do a budget for yourself. What is your monthly mortgage? What is your car loan? What's your insurance? What's your groceries? What are your utilities? You back it out and say, how much do I need to make? And how much am I worth? Okay. And you have to go and budget yourself when you're doing this so that you know, is $250,000 a year going to hit the mark? Or maybe you don't even need to make that much. Maybe you only need to make a hundred grand a year and you can quit your job. I don't know. You know, I don't know what your expenses are, but a lot of people feel like they are giving so much of their jobs anymore, working way more than 40 hours a week, and they are not earning what they're worth. And, you know, you think about this, and you think, you know, wait a minute, can I do something else with this calendar year? If, I know it's July, and I was thinking about this today because it's actually the 25th, it's July 25th, there's five months, five months from today is Christmas. It's hard to believe, I can't believe it. This year has gone so quickly, but there's still five more months left in the year. So you can still make money between now and the end of the year and a significant amount of money if you learn how to trade. And it could really make a big difference for you going into the end of 2016, into the beginning of 2017. Because if you learn how to trade and can become profitable as a trader in the next five months, you may be able to get to a point where you can quit your job in January 2017, okay? And, and that's the future. So the now is the present learning how to do it, the future, future doesn't have to mean 10 years from now. Future could be five months from now by January 1. Could be two months from now, okay, September 1. But I trade in the morning. I trade in the morning, half an hour usually a day, sometimes only for a few minutes. So if you want to actively day trade with me, you've got to be available between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. And that's the time that you would need to do it and be in the live trading room. Mondays are the slowest days of the week. 
Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays are the, are the busiest days. So once you know how to make money, the amount you make is just simply a function of what you risk. And most traders think this number is only attainable, you know, if you're trading till 4 o'clock. But the fact is it's really a, a less is more kind of thing with trading. The harder you work to, you know, longer hours doesn't make you more money in the market. It's by doing one specific trade that's a quality trade, just like the Google, okay? And really, one trade a day is, is mostly what I do, like I was saying. So this sounds like a lot, but if you break it down, again, it comes out to be five grand a week. And like I just showed you, you could have made more than that in the one trade I'm in. So you can do this. It's just that many, many people get so overwhelmed. They get so overwhelmed thinking about it that they, that they lose sight of the fact that it actually is very realistic. You've got to live in the now and learn how to make money, even if it's $50 a day, $50 a week, before you can make $5,000. So many people want to put the cart before the horse, okay? I had a, I had a gentleman, I don't know if he's here tonight, Alan, he, he, he has not done the class yet. He's been following me for a while, and he wanted to open up a trading account, but he has absolutely no idea how to do my system. And, and I said, Alan, I don't want you to lose that money that you have in your trading account when you haven't learned how to trade yet. Even if you don't have the money to open up a live trading account, if you could take my class and learn how to do it, eventually you get the money to trade. So many people want to put the cart before the horse. And I hate it when I see people losing in the market because my system works and you can do this. And so many people just want to take pop shots at stuff. And they want to, like I said, they want to jump and, and you have to kind of just walk. But knowing that the future goal that you set is realistic and that you can get there in a realistic time frame that doesn't have to take years and years and years. So anyways, Paul did this nice little uh, chart here, which showed the last 10 days, number of trades. This is from the stock swish room. Some of the days Paul ran the room. Some of the days I ran the room. Paul works for me. There were nine winners and three losers that were called in the room. So the average win rate for the last 10 days is 75%. Again, I was not there every day. However, I will tell you that this is probably a good average, somewhere between 70 and 80% of the trades that the room does. But just to give an example, if you had risked $1,000 in all the trades called in the last 10 days, you would have made $11,000. That, that does not include my Google option, okay? And that's something that I didn't call it in the room that's something that I personally did with the gap option letter, okay? But bottom line is, if you had done that, you know, you would have made way more than this. You can do this. So many people that I talk to just don't believe it's possible. But in 10 days, 12 trades, that's not a lot of trades. That's not that many trades at all. I probably do less trading and less trade calls in any trading room out there because it's just not necessary. And even if a trade doesn't lose in the day, you only lose that one trade. That's it. That's it. it you would have a really hard time losing money in my trading room with me. It, it, you'd have to be a crazy person taking all kinds of trades that I didn't call because I just don't call them any trades. I don't do them any trades. And the nice thing is then your commissions are low as well. The only person that makes money when you over trade is the broker. Now, we're going to go over... The trades from all last week, okay? So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and the trading room, we're going to go over them. And I'm going to explain, for those of you that don't know what a gap is, what a gap is, I'm going to explain that right now. So a gap is simply the difference between the close of a stock, this was DDDD, at 4 o'clock Eastern time, and they open. So the market closes at 4 and opens at 9.30. So this stock closed at one price here and opened the next day at a different price. So it gap. Now, stocks can gap down or stocks can gap up. Okay. Um, Jean C. Jean, you're so cute. Jean is a student already and Jean is in the room. Um, email Paul. Email Paul about sharp ratio and he'll explain it to you. I don't think Paul's here tonight. Um, but you can email him about it. If we have time, we'll go back, okay? So, oh, there's Paul. There, Paul can write it in the room as I'm, as I'm talking. Paul will explain the chart. <laughs> Anyways, going back to this, 
this stock gap down, okay? So the stock from 4 o'clock to 9.30 changed in price. So when you get up in the morning, you need to, first of all, find stocks that are gapping. So you will look on a scanner to find different symbols. In this case, it was DDD. Now, before this even happens, you will predict with my system whether it's a long or a short. So I know if I want to short a stock or buy a stock before the open, or maybe I don't want to do anything. As it turns out, this was a short. And I do prefer to short, for those of you that know me, the stock drop in the day. But the, the beauty of what I do by looking at post and pre-market data in a gap, okay, which is what this is, and the only thing that I do, and again, the only thing a gap is the difference between the close and the open, is that my rating system tells me before this move happens that it's going to work as a short, that I can take this trade, that I can short the stock on a setup, but I'm still not getting in until the open, okay? So here is the chart. This is a one-minute chart. This depicts here the open of the market. The stock literally opened and fell off a planet. So do you see this here? This is a one-minute chart, 930, 931, 932, 933, 934. So in the first, literally, less than half hour of the day, the stock fell hard. This move is what you want to make money on. This is the move here that's happening that the institutions are making, which is selling off the stock. So my, my method, my system predicts that institutions, institutional money, is going to sell DDDD. We're short it. Okay, either way, that's the trading action that's pushing the price down. Now, what are institutions? We were talking about this in the title. Institutions are banks, hedge funds, big, big traders, okay, trade institutional money. It's, it's a lot of size and a lot of volume, and it's the kind of positions that can move a stock, like this, this happened here, really fast, really quickly, just taking its breath away almost. If I shorted a stock like this, I wouldn't be able to move it like this. If everyone in my trading room did, I wouldn't be able to move a stock like this with my entire run. This is really big money that moves the stock that breaks in a price like this that drops and falls a dollar plus. Remember, the price point of this is kind of inexpensive. So this is a big move for it. It's DDDD. I have it at the top here, fat. You can look at the top of the chart. Okay. So anyways, here's the short. Boom. Drop. So again, where would you short it? I, I have specific entries that I call in the room and I also teach in my class. But the main thing is you're shorting. So you're getting the directional bias right. That's how you're going to make money. If you tried to go long this stock, you lost it every turn, okay? Price of the short was 13.48. Stop was 13.83. Share size on this position is 3,000 shares of the DDD if you want to risk what? $1,050. And so in all the trades here, we're using examples of 1,000. There are some trades that I take that I risk more than 1,000. But I'm using this as an average to give you an idea to hit the benchmark of making 250 grand a year. Okay. Anyways, exit 1276, which is just into this drop, boom. Okay. So you literally take it, boom, out, take it out, take it out, take it out. And this is what I do every time I'm looking for something like this. I'm looking to get in the trade very quick and get out. Now, the philosophy behind it. And again, the profit here is amazing, 2,160 bucks. So if, you're, if your goal is five grand a week, again, you hit your goal in half the goal in one trade. But the idea, again, going back to the institutions, is that you are looking for what? Big momentum, a move, and you're looking for it fast. Most hedge funds, banks, institutions know way before the open way before 9.30, what they want to do, because they are seeing the gap, and very often, many of them are making the gap. So therefore, they know before 9.30 what they're going to do. So that's why these moves happen so fast. So if you don't know what to do with DDD before the open, oftentimes you miss it. 
If you go back and look in your scanner, you may say, oh, that stock's down, you know, 10, 15 percent of the day. And then you try to get in and you try to find a short entry and you can't. And guess what? This ends up being the low of the day. Now, I don't remember if this was or not on this, but the point is very often 80 percent of the momentum and moves of the stocks are made right between 930 and 10. And if you're going and you're trying to figure out what to do at 10 o'clock or later, you're, you're missing it. You're missing the move that the institution is making because they have it planned out that they want to sell or short or go long, not in the case of DDD, but other stocks before the open, okay? So conceptually, the idea of figuring out what to do before the open is a smart move, and this is the edge, okay? There, I have a lot of things that I do that is very unique to, to me, but I will tell you that it's not only picking the directional bias that gives me an edge with my 26-point rating system, which we'll talk about a little more later. It's the fact that I know what I want to do before the open. Now, I still am waiting for the setup. But that preparation, that knowing, that 100% conviction that I have that I'm going to sure DDD when it sets up or if it sets up, boom, and I'm watching it gives me an edge because many, many people have absolutely no idea what they're going to trade or do until 9.45, 10 o'clock, and sometimes even later, okay? And then they're looking on a scanner trying to find stuff and many times coming up short or, or at the very least looking at a, a watch list of maybe five, six, seven, eight, ten things and then not really sure what to focus on. And, and that's a big problem too. And then, you, then people are looking at maybe a list of – six stocks and they don't know which one to do and it's getting later and it's 10 o'clock and then and then sometimes people do all six they do six trades and guess what you're in six trains you can have six losses you know okay you're in one train but the worst thing that can happen to you one loss you do one train a day that's five trains a week what's the worst thing that could happen to you you could lose five days in a row I, I, don't, I don't even know if that's ever happened to me ever, except for when I started. <laughs> but the bottom line is, you know, you have everything working for you when you have everything planned out before 930 to keep you disciplined, functional, profitable, to keep your losses down. You've got the edge because you're reading and predicting what the institutional direction will be before the open, and, and you're watching it. Okay. Now you don't know if it's going to set up to the open, but you're watching it at least if it does. Okay. Any questions so far from anyone? Okay. All right. I'm going to keep going. It looks like Jean answered. Uh, I mean, uh, Paul answered Jean's question there. If anyone else wanted to answer. So. Netflix, let's go over this one. This is a great example, a beautiful example of institutional selling in a chart. Netflix said earnings, this was last week. So the stock closed the night before, right around here. Okay, here's the close, the top of the green bar. Then it gapped down. So this had a major catastrophe thing happening in the gap. I don't remember the exact amount, 15 points down or something. It was, it was, it was, a, it was a large gap down that happened overnight. Whatever the earnings said, I don't read them, but this was real. So there you had it. So then I have a method that I devise where I will, I will rate the gap. It's a checklist, and I'll rate it. And the checklist that I use looks at the daily chart, and it helps me determine if the stock is a short or a long. This was a short, okay? Now we'll look at this here. Again, one-minute chart. Stock opens, rallies, boom. So you could have shorted this here. You actually could have shorted this here. You actually could have shorted this here. I actually shorted this here and had the stop up here. So even though the stock rallied and went over the high, I stayed in the trade. This is something else you learned in the class where to put the stop. Now you see the move here. What is this? This is the institutional sell-off. So they sold it. They sold it off. And many, many traders are looking to buy Netflix because of the green bars here into the open and because of the fact that it was a big gap down. It was a big gap down. It was a big gap down in the support, and traders are thinking it's going to do a gap fill. In fact, I remember some trader emailing me. He was overnight long, long Netflix this night, and, and it did rally the next day because of the market, and I thought, holy cow. And the stock dropped since then the two days after that. I don't know if the guy got out, but bottom line is, 
You know, many people get the directional bias wrong in a chart for overnights and day trades and lose money. You have to know what to look for and what to do in the setup. So this was a beautiful short. So you get in here, 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 put the stop, take the trade, make the money, you get out. So it's more than a dollar move. Uh, Ron is saying, am I using options for the Netflix? No, I did not. For the Netflix trade, no. But again, you can do options trades with my system. I do both. Some of them I do options. Some of them I do um, day trades. But i got to be honest with you, I don't day trade options. When I'm in an option, if I'm taking an option play, I'm riding it out for a couple of days. It's rare. I, I'm, I think one time I took one and got out the same day because, it, because I had a good move. But honestly, I'm day trading. You must have the buying power to take the position. On DDDD, hold on. Ron, let me finish Netflix, and then we'll go back to your question on DDDD. I won't forget, just so we don't get lost here. Netflix, okay, price of the short was 86.04. This is a big stop, but this is a pricey stop. Stop was 87.10, boom. Share size, 1,000 shares. Risk, 1,060. Again, this doesn't have to be exactly. It should be around about 1,000, or if your risk is 500, it should be close. Exit, 85.05. So you get the drop, get a dollar. It actually moved deeper than that. But I was trying to wait for it to go a little bit more. It didn't. And then I got out. And actually, this was a kind of a late trade for me. I was giving it a room to go more. It didn't, but it did move a buck. Total profit, $990. This is a nice trade. Again, if your goal is $1,000 a day, there you go. Do I take secondary entries? What do you mean by secondary entries, Fat? I don't know what you mean. You can write that question in the room. And I'm going to go back and, and answer uh Ron's question, uh, do, 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 do. 3,000 shares. Okay, I think Ron is asking about the buying power of cash required for this. I'm going to do a math lesson here. I think we do this every class now. 3,000 shares times what? If the price of the stock is 13.48 equals what? Oh, that did that up there. I don't know why that always does that, Kathy. 3,000 shares times, it just put it up above, 13.48 equals what? So you would you would figure it out. What is 3,000 times 13.48? Anybody want to do it really, really quickly? Ron, you should do it because you're figuring it out. No one's figuring it out. And Ron asked the question. The exact amount, if we're going to be exact, is $40,440 in buying power that you would need in order to take that position. Does that mean that you need that much cash? No, that doesn't mean that at all. That means the leverage buying power, you are borrowing it from the broker. You must have the cash in your account to cover the position per the buying power limitation. So what does that mean? Everyone trades with buying power of leverage. So if you're at a profit account place, you would need, if you get 10 to 1 leverage, a little over $4,000 to take this position. Cash. If you're at a retail place that would give you 4 to 1 for day trading buying power, you'd need a little over 10000 cash to take this position. There are different kinds of brokers and there are different kinds of trading accounts and they give you different leverage. I'm not a broker. You'll have to look into that yourself. But you do not need $40,440. Does so that is that clear, Ron? You're trading with leverage. And any intelligent person would. Okay. You are in these trades and out of them in seconds and minutes. You are flat way before four o'clock. And if you're in an overnight, like I'm in an option, you have a fixed risk and you can't lose more than that. Okay. Fat is saying after some time, if a stock takes second time to nosedive. I have, I have entries. I take the first entry every time, Fat. I just take the first entry. I just take the first entry and I because I know how to do it. Um, Fat, were you, were you emailing that message to me?
I, I don't know if you were sending that to me, Pat. Um, Alpine Trader is asking about Netflix. You had to stop over the high. You didn't, it shouldn't have been over the high. You got taken out. So Alpine Trader did the short, had to stop too tight and got taken out. Well, you got to you got to know how to look at this thing. You got to how to read the gap. I mean, I got to tell you, this was this was professional trading at its finest the day I did this. I mean, many, 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 many people probably went long Netflix, and Alpine Trader just says that they they shorted it but got taken out, but I didn't. So you know, this is I mean, this is the difference between me and I'm trading gaps for eight years, and you know, a lot of other people. I'm really good at this. This this gap was not ideal. It was a good gap. It was a short. It was the only thing I liked in the day, but you know, you have to know the levels on this, and, and and I also you have to know the stock. I mean, I've traded Netflix probably one million times. My live trade on YouTube. That's how you find out about me. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. So I forget. Did we tape the room this day, Paul? I don't even remember. I guess I guess the room must have been taped that day. This was this was. A, I mean, I I mean, if you if I. It, if you were in the room this day, some of the students are here, or if it was taped, I don't even remember now. Um, you know, I, I was hold my breath. I mean, I was, I mean, this might not have worked. I had a lot of conviction in the gap. I had a lot of conviction in the gap, but it took, a, it didn't even take that long, which was the hilarious thing. I mean, if you count, let's just count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I mean, it literally only took like 11 minutes into the open deal. It finally held and made the high of the day. But for me, sometimes it does feel like an eternity. But this worked. So if you were too tight with it, you got taken out. But you got to know the stock. And and I say that to people who got to be familiar with it. But this is one of the advantages of being in the trading room with me. If I give the call and I say, you know, five by 10 or whatever I say the number is, then you then you put the stop where I tell you to put it, where I'm putting it. And you got to size yourself right, you know? And, and, but this had to hold here and it did. Okay. Christina wants the questions posted in the room. I'll try to answer them out loud if Kathy doesn't have time to post them. I, I don't have time to post them or maybe Paul can post them or if not, I'll try to read them out loud, Christina. I think I'm caught up. I think I'm caught up. I don't know if Fat wants information about the class. I didn't really understand that or Fat was emailing somebody else about that. I really don't get what he was saying there. Um, but you know, you have to take the class to learn to learn my system. Yeah. Any other questions about Netflix? All right, let's go to the next one. This was Paul's play, DFS. Okay. DFS gap down, closed here, boom, gap down. Now, this was an earnings trade. Some of the gaps are earnings. Some of them are not earnings. Okay, so here's where it closed and here's where it opened. Remember, this is happening at 930. This is closing at 4 o'clock. This is opening at 930. Where did this happen? Sometimes it happens at night. Sometimes it happens in the morning. But either way, it happens before, okay, before not, uh, 930. I'm seeing Kevin's microphone. Can everybody hear me or did I lose sound again? Kevin's microphone just went on and off 10 times. Can everybody hear me? Okay, I don't know what happened there. I'm just I'm just aware of that because of the, I just got a flood warning thing on my phone. <laughs> Anyways, let's go to DFS. How did it set up? Open, huge rally, boom. Very aggressive here, but it worked. And it dropped like a brick. And actually, this was Paul's trade, and he got out of it, I think, in this area here. But it even went a little bit more. It even went a little bit farther. Price of the entry was 56.59, stop 57.01, share size 2,500. Again, risk is 1,050, exit 55.92. Total profit 1,675 bucks. And, and it, it actually went farther. You can see here where it went more. It actually really broke 56 hard, okay? I think you could have made another 50 cents on it. Anyways, profit here was 1675 bucks. So, you know, some days you'll get out of something and it'll keep going. But it doesn't even matter.
leader. The goal is to make money. And if you've got your goal in and your goal is $1,000 a day and you're up 1000 and starts to back up, then you take it. Then you take it. I mean, this is what I was talking about. You chunk it out. You've got your goals and you don't deviate. If you're like $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, you're up $1,000 and starts to back out, take it. It's close to the target. Get out. Okay, take it. And you do have to know targets. And I teach this in the class too, but I write it in the room in the morning. Okay. I write them in the room in the morning, what the targets are. Any questions so far about this one? About INTC? Okay. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> about DFS. So I didn't get to INTC yet. <laughs> okay, good. All right, let's go to the next one here. This was a little rinky dinker. This one gapped down. Another earnings, closed the night before here, dropped, broke, gapped down. So the night before here, it was at $35 and some cents. In the morning, guess what? It opens at $34 and some cents. How do you know what to do? Is it a long or is it a short? I have a method to predict what institutions are going to do. Are they going to go long the stock here in the gap down or are they going to short it? Are they going to buy it to fill the gap or are they going to short it? You need to know before if you don't know what the direction is of this thing before, you're going to lose. Because Netflix is a great example. You might have shorted it, gone long it, shorted it, gone long it, gone long it, shorted it. You might have taken it four different times in four different directions. And that's how people lose money. You must have 100% conviction that this is a short. And it either sets up and works or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, you take one loss. And if it does, you're up. Okay? You can't be flip-flopping things. I'm shorting, 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 Christina. I think that's what you meant, that you just meant where I'm taking the trade. Christina's saying, I'm buying at the open. I'm shorting in these ones. But the open to me is in the first couple minutes. So not at right at 930 am I in train, but I'm usually in in the first 5, 10, 15 minutes. To me, the open is between 930 and 10 when I'm playing the stock. On the exact open of the second of the day, am I shorting something exactly at 9.30? No, no, I'm not. Because you, because the bar is just opening and I want to make sure I even get a setup and a trade. And again, I teach the entries and the setups in the class. But if I if I, if I would take an entry right at 9.30, some of these bars, now let's go back here and look at this one. Look, look If you shorted this in the open, you, you'd be down. You'd be down a million dollars before you're up a million. <laughs> so, so I don't, I let this thing just trade. I don't go right there. But to me, the open is this half hour period. Yeah, okay. I think I think you know what I mean. All right, let's look at the INTC, okay? INTC, dropped, broke, rallied up. This was not a huge, huge move for the stock, but this is kind of like a baby snail. This, this stock doesn't move, you know, two, three dollars in the day. This was a decent move for it. Now, Paul did this one. He was very aggressive. He did take this into the open. I would have done this here, okay? I was off this day. It was Thursday. Anyways, Paul did this here. I would have done it here. But anyways, it worked. This ended up being the high of the day. He was a little tight then with the, with the, um, with the, with the move, and he put the stop tight, tight. Um, but it was a profitable play, and we're going to go over it. So it depends how aggressive you want to be. If you want to be really, really aggressive, you could put the stop like sometimes a break even. Again, I don't do that, but you could. So there's different ways to money manage yourself. And Paul and I have a little different um, ways of doing that. But I think that you have to know yourself and what you're comfortable with your risk. And that will determine whether or not you use a trailing stop, whether or not you put the stop at break even after it starts to go up. Uh, whether or not you get out of half or whether or not you let the whole trade right out to a bigger target. I usually try to be out of my trade, so to be honest with you, by 10 o'clock. It's, it's very, very rare that I would hold something past 10, okay? Yeah, Paul did take this here. He was in it right away. Now, I'm going to go back and show you what I would have done, but I didn't trade that day. But Paul had a good entry here. It did set the high of the day into the open, Okay. Price here, 34.28, stop was 34.51. Share size was 4,000, risk 920, and then he exited here. So we made money on the train, but he, he was very aggressive on it. So this could have played out and just fallen like a brick here. 
I think what he was looking for, going back in the daily chart, he was looking for this to have the huge move right down here. But do you see it made this little jiggity jaggedy? So this topping tail here is what happened at 9.30, and then it pushed back again and broke. So personally, I would have done the entry here. This high today, though, did hold. He just decided to be tight with it. Why? Because he was aggressive on the entry. I don't get in in the open. I might have done this twice in my life, and this wouldn't be a gap I'd do it on, but Paul really liked it. So he had a lot of conviction in the gap. And again, you know, this is personal preference here. Do you think this is going to some crazy number? In an ideal world, I mean, this could have gone all the way down here in the day. But the market's been so strong. So, you know, you look at this, and you look at the overall market, you have to be realistic with your expectations of some of these moves. And, and that's another reason. I'll tell you this really quickly, too. You know, a lot of people are, are, are trading this year are all over the place because people didn't know what the market direction was. People thought the market was possibly going to break and was a short. And I've been calling the market to make brand new all-time highs. It did. It finally did it in July. I've been calling it for more than a year. And, and the market's been choppy for a lot of people. And if you don't have a specific strategy to trade and a focus and can't be disciplined enough to do one trade a day, you know, like I'm teaching people to do and doing it myself, you, you could be not having a great year as a trader. You must be very, very, very strategic with what you do, okay? But this was still a profitable trade. So even somebody that doesn't mil fall a million miles, you can make money in. I mean, if you took every trade that Paul or I called in the room and then quick put the stop at break even, you know, you may never lose. I don't know. I mean, that's not how I trade, but, uh, you know, this still made money. Then we'll go over this last one here for the week, which was Friday. This actually was a huge, huge mover. Again, stock closed the night before and then gap down. So we're looking at the gap. What are institutions, hedge funds, banks going to do? Are they going to buy the stock in the gap down? Is it going to rally? Should we go long it or should we short it? You've got to know before the open. You have to know before the open, okay? So here, this is a five-minute chart. This is, down here you can see it. Usually I trade to one minute. Every once in a blue moon, I'll look at a five-minute, just only a five-minute, but this took a little while to get going here, which is fine. It took a little longer to get its move on. But here is the open. Okay, remember, this is five minutes now. Boom, boom, and you see this was a little whippy here. But then it finally started to break very, very nicely, okay? This is a 50-period moving average. This is a 20-period moving average. And this is an 8-period moving average, for those of you who don't know. And this line just here depicts the open of the day. Anyways, the entry in this one is what? $10.06. Stop is $10.21. This is a great entry. Share size 6000 if you're risking 900 bucks. okay? And again, when I'm, when I'm taking sizes, I'm just usually rounding up usually, okay? Exit here, have these. 956, 951, it was a very similar exit anyways. It did end up breaking a little bit, but push back here. Total profit, this is more than half your week in one trade in one day. And not even holding it all the way down to the low of the day. And I always tell people it's not it's not realistic for you to get out of shorts at the low of the day or to get out at the high of the day and long. You just want to make money. That's your only goal. Don't be worried about getting some perfect exit. You get the perfect entry to stop right, size yourself with size, and get the direction right, and you're going to make money, okay? So profit on this one was 3150 bucks. That's a nice trade. So getting back to what I was saying earlier, what is it required to make this kind of money? If you had 1,000 shares of something and it moved a dollar, there's your 1,000 there's your bucks, okay? 2,000 shares moved 50 cents, there's your 1,000 bucks. And if you took 4,000 shares, then you'd only have to put 25 cents and there's a thousand bucks. So these are very realistic moves. I'm trading stocks with volume. I'm trading stocks that move. I'm trading stocks with momentum. I don't trade penny stocks. I trade real movers in the market. I wouldn't say I trade high flyers like Google every day. And I'm in that in an option, not a day trade. But these are very realistic positions, sizes for moves in most of the stocks that I trade. And you can see here, even in the DDD, it's, you don't even need something necessarily to move a dollar. But if you have four or 5,000 shares of something and it moves a buck, you know, that's a $5,000 profit. If it moves a dollar, you have 5,000 shares. So how much money you make really depends on the share quantity that you take in the trade. 
And that's, it, that's determined by the stop amount. Like I was saying earlier, the first number I always give is the entry, the second number is the stop. And that's how you determine it. But the most important thing is you've got to get the directional bias right. If you were long Netflix, you didn't, you didn't make any money that day. Okay, you got stopped out, and you might have even gone long it twice and lost two times. You might have even taken two losses and two trains. Netflix was a short. Okay, the institution sold it off into the gap and continued the selling into the gap on the day, into that morning period, which again is between 9:30 and 10. But you get the accuracy of of the strategy. Okay, from the strategy of knowing what direction to do it. And all of this, again, is based on common sense. I am looking. What is the big money doing? Where, where, what are they doing? Are they going to sell the stock or short the stock? And I'm not talking about people like you and me. Like I said, it's, it's, the room wouldn't even move a stock. We're talking about uh, big, big traders that trade millions and millions and millions of shares. And that's what happens. Like they come in and they just dump it into the open. But you've got to get the pushback and the follow through to get the continuation. But every day I'm looking for a gap. In the morning, before 9.30, and sometimes at night, I rate it. I have a method to rate it. It's a checklist. It predicts the direction that the stock will move, whether you should go long it or short it. And then I wait until the live day to take the setup. And then I get out, and I'm, I'm done. I'm done usually by 10 o'clock, 10.15, but I close the room at 10, uh, 11 o'clock. So I'm just looking for the momentum. Here's another great example. Now, this is a long, I rarely go long, but I, but I wanted to put this in here because you can use my system for, you know, long. I prefer to short. I will always err to the downside because I think you can make money faster short. This was a tremendous move that happened in cost. Costco had earnings. And I just want to show you the low here on this is 158.13. And the high up here is into this move is 163.21. This is a perfect example, people, of institutional money or power money or big money in, in, in a stock. There's no way that this stock, this is from 9.30, so it's 20 minutes, a little less than 20 minutes. So in less than 20 minutes, okay, the stock moved $5. That's tremendous. And the price point of the stock is not cheap. It is not cheap. There's nothing that could make this happen other than an institution. It's institutional money. You and I could never make this happen. But if you and I are in this stock long while this is happening, guess what? You're making a lot of money. It moved $5. And in less than 20 minutes, then you're up. Okay? But you, but you had to get the direction right. Because if you weren't long this, if you were short it, you would lose. As fast as you would make money, you would lose money if you get in the wrong direction. And it's so simple. But so many people do not make money trading because they don't get the direction right. Every once in a while, someone put the stop at the wrong place, like like somebody said earlier. But that's that's you know that's just people not knowing how to take entries right. That can be corrected. Many many times, people just don't understand if something's a long or a short. And the market's a great example of that because many people are short the market, and it's it's gone over the high in the spot. Now it hasn't yet in the kitty news, but it's gone. So your goal every day is to find the momentum. You're zeroing in on the specific time frame, which is between 9.30 and 10, to get the big move, okay? The strategy, the gap strategy, tells you to focus on it, and it tells you what stock to watch each day, and that's where you're going to get the big money. Again, we were talking about this earlier, or what, a, what is a gap, but the bottom line is a, a gap happens between the close and open of the next day in the market, and that's as simple as it is. Here's a bigger picture here of Netflix I can show you back since the gap that happened last week where the stock closed and where it opened and then the move that it had to follow through day. So it is, it is something that you sometimes can do for continuation. You could do swing trades and options or you just do the day trade in the stock. This was a kind of expensive, but you know, I, I usually am doing things under $100 price point, but you could have done an option in this too if you wanted to. Either way, you're looking for something to gap. Something can gap up or something can gap down. You just never know. And again, here you can really see the difference here. I spread it out on the Netflix chart where many people probably were long the stock. It's not here by this point here. And this is one of the reasons why you get this nice sell-off. So here's the low of the day that was set right here at 930 in the first period here in the first 10 minutes. And so people that went long this over the high or here or here that had to stop here, you see here where they're getting stopped out. And you see this. So, I mean, you really have to know what you're doing with this. And I'm sure a lot of people got tripped up in this. 
you know, might have even done it a couple of different directions in a couple of different ways. You've got to get the right trade. You've got to get the right stock pick. I'll do a different symbol every day. I don't do Netflix Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And you can't buy every gap up and you can't short every gap down. It's, if it would be that easy to trade gaps or to pick directional bias, then no one would ever lose in the market. It is not that way. You have to have a specific thing that you're looking for. Everything I do is all my prediction that I'm making before the open, way before 930, and it's based on my rating method. And it is looking for what an institution is going to do. I'm always looking for the institution to continue the move in the move of the gap of the original gap. And that is what I'm looking for, to have the momentum to come in. And I, I say 100% conviction because I want to know, because I'm not going to risk my money. I'm not going to risk $1,000. I'm not going to risk $5 on shorting Netflix if I don't have 100% conviction it's a short. And this is a tricky one. And if, if the video is on, on YouTube, then you know, you can go back and listen to it and sing. So I'm looking for the footprint of institutional money in charts. That's how I'm predicting the directional bias. And I have a rating method that I created. It's a checklist. It's 26 points to go through every morning. I never skip a beat. I never not do it. If I want to short Netflix or anything else, I'm going to rate the gap. If the gap rates 20 points or more, I'm going to short it in the direction of the gap if the gap down or the long if it's the gap up. This is how you can make this kind of money in the market. You will never consistently make money doing something if you don't have an edge. And everyone wants some something like an edge, like an algorithm, or they want a Fibonacci, or they want an indicator, or they want a ding thing that comes off on their on their platform, an alert or something. It's not like that. You actually have to analyze the price. You you actually have to analyze the price and rate it, like with your brain. And that's what I'm doing. When I'm rating the gap, I'm doing it manually. I'm just doing it manually when I look at it. I'm saying, where is the power of money coming in the gap? Let me look at the big picture daily chart, okay? Many traders are, are looking at this in a very simplified way, and then they will go long something that's gapping down because they think it's going to fill the gap. But I'm looking at the bigger picture. I have my rating method. It tells me if it's going to, they're going to continue to sell off into the open. If it rates good, I do it. If it doesn't, if something rates up 12 points, I won't do it. It's got to be 20 or more as a benchmark for my system. And so, again, it's about getting the direction right. Because if you're long something that goes down like this, you're screwed, okay? This is, this is just a clipping here of the SPY, but I will show you here again. The move that the SPY has made in the last month is amazing. This is all power money. This is all new money coming to the market that's buying the market up and it's rallying. And the SPY has made new highs. It keeps making new highs. And even today, we closed strong despite the fact that we were down on the day. We still closed strong. This is power money. You would never have this happening almost straight up, almost vertical without money lifting it. This is real money, people. It's new money coming into the market. The market's higher. Okay, I, I predicted all of this to happen, but you, this is just so obvious here to me. People say, oh, it's going to pull in. It's going to pull back. It's going to pull back. It's going to, we're going to get toppy. We're going to, no, this is money that's, boom, it's in. It's institutions and hedge funds in the market. And once they decide to go long and they're in it and they are just in it now in the last month, they're not going to quick get out. They're buying in to lift the market higher. They're not going to quick get out. Okay. Unless some catastrophic event happens, and I always caution that, you know, I say a catastrophic event or world war or something. Anyways, as I was talking about the whole entire time, I have a system. It's a 26-point rating system. It teaches you what direction to do the stock, like Netflix and all the other trades I've been talking about today. We're kind of running out of time here, so I'm going to flip through this. But I teach people what stock to trade every day in my class. I teach the 26-point rating system. I teach the entries. I teach the targets. I teach support. I teach resistance. And I didn't do any of this for anyone but myself, to be honest with you. And it works. And I've been doing it now for eight years. And I'm very grateful that I know how to trade. I could never, never have predicted the move that the overall ETF of the SPY and the, and the QPCs are making if I didn't know how to trade that. I don't think anyone else predicted this the way that I did. And, and, uh, and there's so many different ways you can use my system. Options, swing trades. You can even use it for futures. You can use it for Forex, except for there's only one gap a week. You can use it for anything to trade the moves that has an open and a close when it gaps. I prefer to day trade because I like to have the money right away in my account. And when you day trade, after you take it and you're in and you're out quickly, you've got the money immediately. 
but you don't need a hundred different strategies in order to be successful. I think that really works against a lot of people. Even the options and the day trades I'm doing is based on the gap. It's based on me reading the directional bias and the gap. I'm not doing fancy option trades. I'm saying I'm doing a call because it's higher, it's a long, or I'm doing a put if it's lower and it's a short. I'm not doing very complicated or complex options trades. My system is so so common sense. Once you take the class and you learn it, you're like, oh my gosh, this makes sense. Now everything I see it. It's just that many, many people are sometimes make trading so complicated. And it, and, it, and it really, once you know what you should be paying attention to, which by the way, is what institutions are doing in something. And that is why I call this so well here. Once you know what you're supposed to be paying attention to, you will be able to make money in the market. You are supposed to be paying attention to institutional power. It's called power of money. And if you don't know how to read that, then you're never going to make money in the market. And if you come to me, you will learn how to read this, and then you will be profitable. Whether you make $250,000 a year or 250 bucks a week, you will at least make money when many people are losing. I was talking about this the other day. I said to someone, it was Dwayne. It's a, it's a zero-sum game trading. Not everybody wins. Most people lose. I don't create anything when I take a trade. When I'm in Google, I'm in the trade. I'm not creating anything. Guess who wins? Guess who makes the money? The one that gets it right. The one that can make the prediction before it happens. The one that's correct in the prediction. The smart people. You can't look at this as something other than what it is. Okay? You are doing this, and you have got to be with the smart people. Guess who that is? The hedge funds, the banks, the ones that are running it. So all you have to do is be with them and you will make money. And, and we're talking about taking several thousand shares, but really that's a pittance. It's a small, small amount of share size in these stocks because they trade millions and millions of shares, okay? Which as one single person, you can make a lot of money. You can make several thousand dollars a day or even one trade. So you don't need to be some huge, massive institutional trader trading millions of shares to, 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 to do it. You just got to get a small, tiny piece of it, even if you don't even get the whole move, okay? So I teach a class. It's this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, July 30th and 31st, Saturday and Sunday, 9 to 5 Eastern time. It can be anywhere in the world and take it. Retakes are free. The class is online. Cost of the class is $49.99, and you can retake it as many times as you want to. If you want more information, email me. And if you want to sign up for a trial for the rest of the week, email me. Paul can put my email in the room. And there's been so many things in the news, and I know many of you are in different places. I just want to say, be safe. If you're traveling this summer, if you're vacationing this summer, if you're going away, if you're in a different country, please be safe. Uh, many of my clients are in different countries, and every day I turn on the news, and it's just something else. It's just, you know, you got to be safe and, and be aware of your surroundings. Does anyone want me to go back? Does anyone want me to go back? Does anyone want me to... Look at anything previously. We do have a couple minutes. Yes, you can use my rating system to for bullish gaps. You would look for a stock to be gapping up like Costco, okay? And you would rate the gap for Costco to go long. You would rate a short, a down gap like Netflix to short. Okay. If it doesn't rate 20 points or more as a long, like Costco did, but if it didn't, you wouldn't go long it. Okay, but it did. So the bottom line is yes, but you're still going long bullish gap. Does that make sense, Christina? Which candle were you talking about, Christina? Or was that back from a while ago? Oh, that was an old question. Good, good job, everyone, today. My internet lasted, even though we're getting, we're getting thunderstorms and lightning. It's completely dark out now here at 530. <laughs> Listen, this is a great webinar. Lots of questions and good participation. Email me at Melissa at thestockswoosh.com if you want more information. And if you want to do the class this weekend, it's a great time to trade because it's earnings season. It's third quarter earnings season, and you get a lot of earnings and many, many stocks that have earnings gap. You don't know if they're going to be playable. You don't know if they're going to be good gaps or bad gaps until they actually gap, and then you rate the gap. But it's a busy time to trade in July and August for what I do. 
Many people don't know what to do in the summer months, but the market's been very volatile and it's had a lot of momentum here, even in the last month of July. Okay, great, everyone. Thanks for coming. And email me if you would like a trial for the rest of the week. It's melissa at the stockswish.com. You're welcome.